Hi, it's Caroline here. Welcome back. Today I wanted to take you along with me as I sew a medieval inspired shift dress. This project was pretty much entirely inspired by Morgan Donner, who is a historical costumer here on YouTube. She introduced this really cool concept called history bounding, which is basically the idea of mixing historical and modern clothes to fit your everyday needs or your preferences or your comfort level. And uh, she has a whole video explaining that, so I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. I absolutely love the idea of mixing historical and modern clothing. I've been interested in historical costuming for a couple years now, but I've never actually started a historical costuming project myself. I was always intimidated by the research and the historical accuracy and the techniques and the complexity of all these garments. So I never started a historical costume. So a historically inspired garment is the perfect place for me to start. I can skim the world of historical costuming and play in that space without all of the pressure of this is a historical costume. I can also always fall back on my modern sewing techniques, which I'm really confident in. And I get to wear the finished project in my everyday life, which is always good. So for my first ever historically inspired garment, I am going to be following Morgan Donner's medieval shift tutorial. And if you don't know, a shift is the innermost layer of clothing worn next to the skin, and it's prevalent pretty much throughout history. What drew me to this style of garment is the simplicity. It's made up of only rectangles and triangles, which means it can be draft and sewn very easily, and um, it can be cut with very little fabric waste. I also thought this style would be really cute as a light summer dress. I'm going to be using linen for this project, which is what a historically accurate medieval shift would be made out of. Uh, but I'm going to be using a navy linen, whereas most shifts are white linen. Other than the color and the fact that I'm going to be sewing this by machine, I'm pretty much sticking to the tutorial exactly, so let's get started. First things first, I have to get some measurements. My mom also started her own shift with me, so that's why she's in the background measuring herself. Some important measurements are the bust, width of the shoulders, bicep, and hand. I do want to mention that I won't be going into extreme detail with every step. Morgan Donner's tutorial is very detailed and I'm following it pretty closely, so check out her video if you want a step-by-step -step guide. I then measured the fabric I'm planning on using. I need to know how much I have so I can plan my cutting accordingly. My fabric is 52 inches wide and 93 inches long, which is right around two and a half yards. Based on my body measurements and the size of my fabric, I came up with a cutting layout. Another reason I wanted to share my version of this project is to show a bigger person using this method. Often these small yardage projects or projects you draft right on the fabric don't take into account people larger than the creator. And uh, Morgan Donner is definitely smaller and shorter than me, so I adjusted my layout accordingly. For reference, I have a 45 inch bust, a 40 inch waist, and a 54 inch hip. And this is the layout I came up with on the left. I'm making a knee length shift with full length sleeves. And just for reference, my mom is a bit bigger than me in the bust, and she is making a tunic length shift with three quarter length sleeves. So you can see the difference in her cutting layout. I think if you have a bust measurement over around 48 inches, you would need wider fabric or you might need to cut out the body pieces not by, side by side, which means potentially needing more fabric. But I think you could play around with the layout to get an efficient use of the fabric. Next, I took all the measurements from my cutting layout and started marking my fabric. For the sleeves, I'm cutting the little triangle to create the elbow to wrist taper and adding that extra triangle to the top half of the sleeve to create room for my bicep. I was worried this wouldn't work for me because I have pretty big biceps, but my measuring worked out okay and uh, this little sliver was enough extra width. After my cutting, I only had this much fabric waste, two little strings and a nice strip that I might use for a belt. 
and it's time to get sewing. I'm starting with the sleeves and I'm going to be using flat felled seams to finish all my raw edges on this project. If I were making an actual historic shift for a costume, I'd be hand felling all my seam allowances down to avoid machine top stitching on the final garment. But seeing as this is a historically inspired garment, I'll be speeding up the process with my machine. For all the seam allowances that included the selvage of the fabric, I trimmed off the fluffy edge uh, to reduce bulk and then I flat felled them as normal. After sewing the gusset slash gores to the body pieces, I really quickly basted up the shoulders and the side seams so I could try the dress on. It's looking pretty darn good. I took this opportunity to mark the neckline. Then I ripped open the shoulder and side seams, cut the neckline, and sewed up the shoulder seams. I used a really big seam allowance for the shoulder seams so I could have a big felled section. This is mimicking the shoulder seam seen on a lot of extant shifts. The real deals aren't constructed in this method, but I like the visual detail. Next, I attached the sleeves, which was super easy due to the flat sleeve head. This left me with a giant flat garment. I folded it in half and sewed up the side seams and the sleeves all in one go. After that, I could try it on again and mark the sleeve length. Next, I trimmed the bottom edge to even it up and I gave it a curved hem. Then I hemmed the bottom edge and the sleeves. During this entire process, I was contemplating my options for finishing the neckline. The dreaded curved edge that is front and center when wearing the garment. Should I do bias tape? That's usually my go-to. Or should I do a rolled hem on the machine? That usually ends in disaster for me. In the end, I went with Morgan Donner's recommendation of hand sewing a tiny rolled hem. It was actually a lot of fun. The linen rolled beautifully, and it was great practice for my thimble skills. I then returned to that extra strip of fabric I had left over and set about making a matching belt. I didn't have any belt closures and the strip wasn't long enough to tie around my waist, so I sewed the strip into a tube and sewed a buttonhole on one end so I could knot the free edge. I'll show how this works in just a moment. And that was it! I was done!
love this dress so much, I was instantly inspired to try out some styling options. Here we have the shift on its own, and then there's the matching belt. I think it would also look really great with pretty much any belt, and some heeled boots make it super modern. Then add a leather jacket and bam, you have a super cute outfit. I also thought it would look really nice under a full skirt. Then I went wild and imagined it with an overdress. This style is like a mashup of 90s jumper dresses and medieval surcoats. Super fun. I am so pleased with how this project came out. Uh, it was a really fun and relaxing and simple sewing process, and uh, I really liked working with the linen. Somehow I always forget that I really love linen. Even though this was based on a medieval garment, I think the final dress has a kind of 1920s silhouette. I think where I place the gores gives it a dropped waist effect, which I'm actually not mad at. This project made me confident that I do have enough skills to start a real historical costume, so that might be in the future for me. Thank you for joining me, and happy sewing!